So something big just happened. A couple of months ago, I caught the bug and I just pulled the trigger on something very big. This is my brand new one wheel. If you don't know what a one wheel is, it's this guy here, it's like a skateboard, but instead of four wheels in each of the corners, there's one big go-kart tire in the middle. And the electric motor that's inside of it keeps you balanced and pushes you forward or backward. I started getting obsessed with wanting one of these, and then when I was in Toronto, I got the opportunity to ride Jesse Driftwood's one wheel, and it was so much fun, even if only for 10 minutes or whatever it was. Oh my gosh. So there's not really a whole lot more to say about this. I thought this might be a cool way to test out some other things. Something else that I got really recently is the camera that I'm actually using to film this right now. This is the Sony a6400 and it's a pretty new camera on the market and they were marketing it towards vloggers. Now typically I shoot on the a6500 which has some features that this doesn't but this also has a lot of updated things that the a6500 doesn't have. So the question for me is, is this actually a great vlogging camera? Since I have these two new things, the one wheel and the vlogging camera, why don't we test them both out? Let's take a ride to work. Just to qualify a couple of things, I've had the A6400 for just over a month now. If you saw my Toronto vlog, a bunch of that footage was actually shot with it. So I have had some time to test it. So the things I'm gonna talk about today are not only from today, but also from some experience. The one wheel on the other hand, I got about four days ago. I put in a decent amount of kilometers on it, but this is the first time that I'm doing like a really long range kind of haul on it. And it's also the first time that I'm trying it with my big backpack on with everything that I need for my whole day at work and my lunch and all that kind of stuff. So already I can feel that it's a different experience riding with a lot of weight on my back, but that's what vlogs are all about, adventure, right? So my trek to work is about 17 kilometers, which is approximately 10 and a half miles. And the first part of it is going down into a huge valley and then coming back up out of that valley. And on my way up out of the valley, it gets pretty steep. And the one wheel can, it can crush some hills. But this time what you just heard back there was the one wheel not crushing hills. I was pushing up and it kept slowing down and slowing down and then eventually the nose hit. No fall though, so that's good. Now we're back on flat ground, back up out of the valley, and back on the one wheel. One of the first things about the A6400 that kind of makes it considered a vlogging camera is the fact that it has a flip up screen. It flips up, which some people aren't as happy about, but it's super handy. I must admit, as someone who had been making videos for a couple of years with the A6500, not having the flip up screen, it definitely was tough to know. You kind of had to set up the shot and then go back and make sure that it worked. And if it worked, then okay, let's repeat that. Now I can see exactly what my frame looks like. I can see exactly what my exposure is. It's, you know, it saves so much time in the end. But one of the things that people are really disappointed about this camera is that it doesn't have the in-body stabilization that the A6500 does. Which means that when you're walking or running or doing any of those normal things that might happen in a vlog, it's gonna be really shaky unless you're using an optically stabilized lens Which is why today I'm using the 18 to 105 f4 lens from Sony Which is an optically stabilized lens when I would do more vlog style stuff with my Sony a6500s Which have the stabilization in it. I would actually use the 16 millimeter from Sigma That doesn't have stabilization, but I would still get great results because of the in-body stabilization in the a6500 
Okay, that bridge was just a little bit scary, but really fun at the same time. Now going back to the screen on the A6400 for a second, one of the great things that they've upgraded since the A6500 is that there's no more screen dimming when you're shooting in 4K. So previously on the A6300 and A6500, because the processor wasn't efficient enough, it caused a lot of heat. And so in order to stop it from overheating, they would actually dim the screen slightly when you're shooting in 4K and I think 120 frames per second. Now now when you're shooting outside, this can be a huge problem because you can't see what you're doing. But on the A6400, they've put a new... My battery died. Battery life still isn't great. But on the A6400, they put in a new processor, which is much more efficient, and it means that they can keep the screen from dimming when you're shooting in 4K and 120 frames per second. Which again, when you're out on a nice, beautiful day like this, that's huge because otherwise you just can't see that screen. Taking a quick break, I've officially reached what I consider kind of the halfway point from home to work, right down in the River Valley in Edmonton. It's beautiful down here. I'm just gonna take long enough of a break for the feeling to come back into my toes. But while we're here, we might as well talk about the fact that because the screen on the A6400 flips up instead of out to the side, you kind of have to do some things to make it work as a vlogging camera. So you can see here that I've got a cage on the A6400, and the reason for that is because because this specific cage has a hot shoe or cold shoe adapter over on the far side that I can put my gigantic microphone on. This is the Deity D3 Pro with a windsock on it. So you can see the screen flips up. The cage does block it a little bit, but it's not a huge deal. If I turn this straight on, you can see that the screen does still get blocked a little bit by the windsock itself, but it does work. I can see my frame decent enough and I can tell whether everything is in focus and whether it's exposed correctly. I'm also using my Alter RFS filter holder so I can go without the filter or with it. And I decided to go with the classic Joby Gorillapod today, because why not? There are some other devices that make it even better to attach a microphone so that it's not blocking the screen at all, but this is doing for me for now. And of course, the one wheel. And as much as I'd love to hang out here in the River Valley all day, gotta keep going. Out of the river valley. I did end up having to walk up the last little bit just because the one wheel couldn't push through the steepest part of that hill, but boy, it makes it easy going up hills. It's a lot easier than biking, I'll tell you that much. The other really big thing about the A6400 that was a really huge upgrade is the autofocus. Sony is known for having pretty great autofocus to start with. They've got their 4D autofocus. And in the past year or two, it's definitely been up there as one of the best autofocus systems that there is out there. But in the A6400, they took it to even the next level beyond that. They've improved speed and accuracy as well as tracking, which is a huge one, especially for vloggers because you want it to track your face nicely. If you're in front of the camera like this all the time, you can't be constantly checking to make sure that you're in focus. And so you have to have an autofocus system that you can rely on. And in this case, the A6400 kind of blows everybody else away.
They made a couple of new updates to the menu system. So for those who had some gripes with the Sony menu system, it's a little bit better now. There is like kind of a favorites page. So you've got quick access to the settings that you get to the most often. One of my favorite new features that they've included is auto white balance lock. So you can actually set the camera to auto white balance, but then lock it so that it doesn't change around while you're in the middle of a shot. This is cool because then you don't have to spend a whole bunch of time fiddling around with checking your white balance for every single shot. You kind of let the camera do it, just make sure you lock it down, and then you're good to go. And one other thing that might be of note that they updated are the picture profiles, including the hybrid log gamma profile, and they've also lowered the minimum ISO for S log. Oh man, my feet are super numb. Been riding a while without taking a break. Oh boy, we're almost there though. And that pretty much covers the majority of the like new features in the a6400 that would make it a better vlogging camera than any of the other Sony's that we've seen before. Everything else is pretty much what we would expect from the a6300. It's the same sensor as far as I'm aware. There's no in-body stabilization just like the a6300. And I think that's really mostly people's biggest gripe is that there's no in-body stabilization in it so you have to use stabilized lenses if you're shooting video and you don't want to have to be careful about it the whole time so now the question is what do we think is it a good vlogging camera are all those upgrades enough to make it worth getting over something like the a6300 or the a6500 with its in-body stabilization in my opinion yeah I do think this is a much better camera than both the a6300 and a6500, especially if you can grab some OSS lenses like the 18 to 105 f4. Really for vlogging, you don't need anything too crazy. If you're just kind of a regular everyday vlogger and all you want is just to capture the moment, I think this is a great solution with again, something like even the kit lens that has OSS in it or the 18 to 105 f4. And especially at the price point where it is between the a6300 and a6500, it's tough to beat that. It's just such good value. But as always, I wanna know what you guys think. Did you think that the a6400 was sufficient for this vlog review? Maybe there was a little bit of both in there for you guys? Anyway, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. Make sure to leave a comment below and on your way down, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. My toes are numb. My toes are absolutely have no feeling in them whatsoever and I'm just getting to work now. All right, bye.